Glory to God. You did it. <laughs> Surprise. Be ready in season and out, right? Hallelujah. Would you turn to Mark 16? Glory. <laughs> Mark 16. Sixteen, sixteen, I believe it is. Is everybody there? In verse 16, it says, he who believes. What's the word believe mean? To follow. Remember, there's a lot of people say they believe, but they're not followers. But in the eyes of God, he says, you're a liar because you won't follow me. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. That is not a difficult thing. In the name of Jesus, if you're filled. Now, here's what we call uh, predestined promises. He says, if you're saved, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. If you're filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit with power, he says, you'll be able to use my name. And in my name, you will cast out demons, even out of yourself. And you will speak with new tongues. That's called tongues, because you're baptized in the Spirit. And you will take up serpents or demonic forces. And if they... And if you drink anything deadly, it will by no means harm you. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. These are called predestined promises. But there's something that he says you must do first. You must be saved. You must follow. And you must be filled with, baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's it. Casting out a demon is not a difficult thing. They have to submit in the name of Jesus, whether you believe it or not. But you must be empowered. You must be backed by the anointing of Jesus Christ. Turn to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Again, it's, these are predestined promises, but there's always something that you must do to receive the promise. You don't get saved unless you repent and turn from your sins and you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen? The Bible says this. He says, if you ask, you're going to receive. So you've got to ask. Amen? If you seek, you're going to find. Does everybody understand that? If you, if you knock, the door is going to be open. But those are pre, predestined promises, but there's something that you must do to do it. You must ask, you must knock, and you must seek. But it all falls under a category. In the word in Galatians 6, in verse 7, it says, what's it say? Do not be what? Deceived. So you can't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he will also reap. In other words, you ain't getting away with nothing. Nobody does. For he who sows to his flesh, will the flesh reap what? Corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap what? Everlasting life. In other words, you must outrun your reaping by sowing more in the Spirit. That means praise and worship. Let us not grow weary. So he says, here it is. If you don't grow weary, doing good, for in due season, you will reap if you don't what? Lose heart. If you don't quit, if you don't give up, you must be consistent. Just because it didn't happen today, it's gonna. Amen? And this is where people get weary. This is how the enemy plays with people's minds. He brings doubt and fear and unbelief. The battlefield is in the mind. As a man thinks, so he is. Amen? In Romans chapter 8. In 
and verse 28. Predestined promises. But there's an assignment attached to each promise. Amen? There's something you must do. In verse 28, let's speak it. And we know that all things work together for the good to who? Those who what? Love God. The word says if you love God, you'll obey him. To those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also what? Called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also did what? Glorified. So here we are. We're predestined in the plan of God, designated to be conformed into the Son of God in his image and likeness and character. So everything you're going through is to deliver you from you and from your old past so you can get in a position where it's no longer you that live but him that lives. But again, there are assignments to everything you and I do so that we can reach that place. One of our goals, and I've shared this before, is to reach the master's level of denying ourselves. There must be a desire that you are willing to reach a level, or the master's level of denying yourself. Well, this is what I think. Well, if there's an I in it, you need to erase it. Does everybody understand that? See, the Father plans it. The Word writes it. And the Spirit leads us into and guides us into the predestined promises. Again, the Father planned it. The Word writes it. The Spirit leads us. So to each and every one, there are predestined promises. Now there are predestined promises for the body, but then there's predestined promises for each and every individual. A predestined plan is a predestined promise. Amen? So we are called, we are justified, and we are glorified in completing these assignments so that he gets all the glory. In Ephesians chapter 1. Now, what will prevent you from fulfilling your assignment to fulfill the predestined promises? Not doing your assignment, not completing. Amen? Cooperation is still the key. <laughs> Without cooperation, there is no success. There is no victory. In Ephesians chapter 1, in verse 3, Predestined promises. See, there are many promises that people will never reach because they don't even know about them. Or they're not willing to accept the assignment to reach them. Or they quit. Remember, God never interrupts himself if he asks you to do something. Never. That's not God. It's the enemy that interrupts. Now, God may interrupt something to rescue you from harm. Amen? But God never interrupts himself. Never. When you complete every assignment according to the will of God, you will be blessed and prosperous. He, he does this in everything. Not only in our personal lives, but in our family, in our businesses, our ministries, everything. He's out to bring us something. He's coming to bring life and life abundantly. The devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's his job. And the devil will do everything that he can 
to prevent you from filling every assignment God has for you so you don't reach the fullness of the promises and predestined promises that God has for you or which is called his plan for you. What you end up doing is in serving the devil's plan instead of, your, instead of God's plan. And there's only two plans, the Lord's or the devil's. That's it. You don't have a plan. You're just choosing which one you're going to choose. People ask me, what's your plan? I don't have a plan. I wait on God's plan. Verse 3, let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in, in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That we should be. In other words, that word should means you got a choice. Verse 5. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the what? In the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Have he made known to us the what? Mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation and the fullness of times he might gather together in all, one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have a what? An inheritance. These are all predestined promises. We have an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his Glory, predestined with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. By cooperation, we are adopted, we are accepted. The mysteries of his will are available. We have an inheritance. All to the praise of his glory. But again, it's all available to everyone who's willing to follow. Everyone who's willing to deny themselves. Everyone who's willing to accept the assignments of God and complete them. Amen? Hebrews 10. You know, one of the things the Lord always said to me, if you're faithful with a little, you'll get more. And don't despise small beginnings. Hebrews 10, verse 32. Let's speak it, please. But recall the former days in which, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence in Christ, which has great reward. For you are in need of in what? Endurance, which is also known as patience. So that after you have completed your assignment from God, you shall receive what? The predestined promises. Everybody see that? For yet a little while, and he is coming who is who, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe in the saving of the soul. By completing your assignments, the promise is released. Now listen, the promise is released in the temporary realm for you now. You don't need the promises when you go home. You need them now. Amen? So there will be little tasks. There's certain things. And, and again, no matter what's going on, God places, places us in the places with overseers and everything, and even at your job. How do you handle your job? That's an assignment at your job. What you do there will be accounted whether God releases a promise or not. 
How you handle your finances. How you handle your family. Whether you're disrespectful or honorable. What you sow is what you reap. Amen. Titus chapter 1. In verse 1, Titus 1.1, 1, 1. Paul, a bondservant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness, in hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. But now in due time manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. In other words, what's the promise? Eternal life. Amen? But is there something you must do? Yes. You must cooperate. You will have multiple assignments to fulfill your eternal life. The word says, no flesh shall glory in the presence of God. It is the promise of eternal life. In Galatians chapter 5. These are predestined promises of God's plan in, for me and you. Galatians 5. That's why he says in a multitude of counsel, there is safety and wisdom. But many people don't accept counsel. They take it and then they think, oh, nothing. But they have no idea what's going to affect them down the road. Because nobody gets away with it. Nobody. I get calls from people later. It could be eight months, two months, six months, whatever. When they've done wrong and they know it was wrong. And then they call needing help. And sometimes the Lord will say, help them. Or sometimes he'll say, no. Because you got to understand something. When you help someone, you are reaping for them also. Does everybody understand that? You are partaking of their reaping for them when you are helping them. Jesus reaped for me and you, didn't he? Amen? It doesn't mean don't help someone. What it means is you better know whether God is telling you to or not. Because there's times when he'll tell you don't pray for this person anymore because your prayers are interfering with what he wants to do. Galatians 5.16. Let's speak it. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, he said, here's a prerequisite. What? Walk in the spirit and you're not going to fulfill the flesh. For the flesh does what? Lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so you don't do the will of the flesh. <laughs> what are the things that you wish? Walk in the spirit, led by the spirit, filled with the spirit. In other words, the flesh of temptation is always there. You will overcome every time if you're in the spirit. Why? It's a predestined promise. You're going to overcome. It's predestined promise. When we begin to understand our predestined promises, you won't freak out so much. You won't walk in fear. You know everything's going to work to the good. If you are completing the assignments God has given you. James chapter 1. People don't realize that tithing is a prerequisite for a release of promises. The word says, would you rob God of his tithes and offerings? How many have to be plumb nuts? And let me tell you something. If you're an individual that calculates it to the penny, you're going to get it to the penny. 
<laughs> it's amazing to me when we get tithe ch checks a dollar thirty-five. You know, <laughs> it's like what is that? <laughs> Talk about squeaky. Talk about do they trust God or not? You know. <laughs> James chapter one verse twelve. Let's speak it. Blessed is the man who endures temptation or overcomes for when he has been approved. Hello. Anybody want to be approved by God? Well, then you have to overcome your temptations. Or you won't be approved. He says he will receive a crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's what? drawn away by his own desires, lusts, or emotions, and then enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is it's full grown, brings forth what? Death, because the wages of sin is death. So he says, man, when you endure temptations, and <laughs> see, these temptations distract or mislead from the assignment so we don't complete them. The promise of the crown of life is to those who resist all the way home. Second Chronicles 7. Predestined promises. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 13. I will start at 12. It says, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. In other words, God places you into an assembly somewhere. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by name, my name will what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And do what? Heal their land. He says, humble, pray, seek, and turn. And you'll be healed. Now the land is also a representation of your body. So those are the prerequisites. Humble, pray, seek, and turn from wickedness. Watch what comes out of your mouth. James chapter 5. Then he will heal. You know, there's people waiting to be healed. Hallelujah. You know, not only do we want to reach a place of mastering to be able to deny ourselves at every choice and decision, but we also want to master our emotions of not allowing them to lead us or mislead us. Amen? Too many people make emotional decisions. James 5.13 What does it say? Is any, anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be what? Forgiven. Confess your trespasses or sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Wow. Anointing the head. That's why we do anointing services. We want the anointing of Christ. There's times when we'll come around and we'll anoint people or lay hands on people, which we plan on doing Friday night unless God says something different. But that's what he's led us to so far. And Psalm 103.
Psalm 103. Is everybody okay? And if people knew the predestined promises of God, <laughs> stood on them, there'd be more victory, more taking of territory, more move of God. Amen? More souls, more salvation, more laborers for the harvest, more bigger harvest. Heck, the body of Christ would be stronger, be kicking butt. There wouldn't be any more democratics in office. They'd be taking offices, which I really believe that's going to be happening now. <laughs> it's already started. Dude, many of them are not even going to be going up for re-election because I know they can't get elected because now they're watching the voting. You can't cheat this time. Hallelujah. Psalm 103, let's speak it. Bless, verse 1. Bless the Lord, all my soul. How do you bless the Lord? Praise and worship. Amen? That's how you bless him. So that's a prerequisite to what? Receive the predestined promise. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is with him. He bless his holy name. And what's going to happen? Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There are benefits. Come on, read it with me. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the what? Like the eagles. Those are all predestined promises of God. But there's something he says. Bless me. Worship him. Praise him. He forgives, redeems, heals, and strengthens. Acts 3. Acts chapter 3. Hallelujah. Verse 18, Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Is everybody there? But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. He says, repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who has preached to you before. Now look at This is so powerful. You know, people are, repentance should be always at the tip of your tongue. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. See, things are given to us in assignments. If you're not willing to complete them, then you won't receive the promise. And many times people think that, okay, well, because you know, nothing's happened, that, oh, they forget all about it. And then they wonder why they're struggling, wonder why they're like, a, like a, there's a limitation in their life or they just can't advance or anything to that degree. And the reason for it is because they haven't completed what God asked them to do. It's simple. Amen? Don't forget what he asked you to do. Write it down. And one thing we need is refreshing every time in God's presence. We need refreshing. Hebrews 10, 19. Hallelujah. Hebrew. Chapter 10, verse 19, therefore, brethren, having boldness, everyone say boldness, to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us do what? Draw near with a true heart 
in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with, washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without what? Wavering, for he who promises faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some, but exhorting one another in so much the more as you see the day approaching. Again, forsaking to assemble. Look at all the promises that are here. You know, when we gather together, there's a special anointing that comes. There's a special refreshing that comes. Boldness comes. Oh, no, Genesis, I'm sorry. Genesis 16. Genesis 16. Genesis 16. Now, one of the things that Ab happened to Abram, or what we, who we call Abraham, and uh, the Lord told him that he would have a, him and his wife, that they would have a child. Of course, they were quite old. And uh, he didn't tell them when, though. See, some of the promises are never, you don't know when, when they're being released. So, so many times because a promise isn't being released, people go and do it themselves. And they create what we call an Ishmael. That's out of God's timing. And when an Ishmael is birthed, now, now grab hold of something because everything that comes into this world is birthed. It's birthed through God's people. It's through birth through the body. It's birth through individuals. Everything that comes through a birth. And how we speak it in. We call those things that are not as though they are. They come through those that we decree. And so in this, Abraham's wife, in verse 1, now called Sarah, Abraham's wife had borne him no child. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, See, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. But he didn't restrain her. It wasn't time yet. Does everybody get it? That's the only reason why it wasn't time yet. So he, she said, please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain a child by her. And Abram heeded the voice of his wife. Then Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be wife. Now, they were not supposed to intermix. After Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. And so he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarah said to Abram, my wrong be upon you. I gave my maiden to your embrace, and when sh she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. So Abram said to Sarah, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarah dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from, and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress, and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. And you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. Now look at this. He shall be a what? Wild. Wild man. His hand shall be against every man. That's called rebellion. And every man's hand shall be against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. Wow. Wow. So when people move out of God's time, they produce an Ishmael attribute, a wild against, wild man, or rebellious. In other words, it's not going to fulfill 
and prom promote the promises of God. In fact, it will come against you. Luke 14. Remember, God doesn't interrupt himself. When you allow the interruption of the enemy come, you will birth an Ishmael. Luke 14, 25. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Now great multitudes went with Jesus, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So that's a predestined promise of God with requests to say, look, if you want to be my disciple, this is where you got to be. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, sister, brother, Children, self, can't be my disciple. In other words, those are idols. He must be number one. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Thus after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see him begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able to, with 10,000, to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if it salt lose, has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Request, prerequisites of becoming a disciple. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter two and verse one. Let's speak it together. Verse one. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace or in the plan that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardship. In other words, you're going to be attacked, but you've got to go get through it. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Are you going to read with me? Let's go. Come on, let's say it again. Start from verse 1. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules, regulations, or prerequisites. Does everybody get it? You know, everybody wants God to do all kinds of stuff for them and all the promises, but they're not willing to pay the price and the assignments God gives them or to fulfill and complete. To be a good soldier, you've got to endure. He says, don't entangle yourself in affairs of this life. You know, he's faithful to complete what he started, man. If we just give him a break and let him do what he needs to do. 1 Corinthians 
And if we'll just cooperate. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. And the reason why I ask everybody to read along is because you're sowing. If you're not willing to read along, then you're not sowing. Amen? Amen. Verse 9, let's speak it. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. In other words, whether it was done in the spirit or in the flesh, whether you c completed the assignment according to the rules of God, or you completed the assignment in the flesh which can't be completed in the flesh. It must be completed in the spirit. Verse 14. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a what? Reward or a what? Promise. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Everyone's tested. Everyone's works are tested by fire to release. In other words, everything that you've accomplished, everything you've done is tested by God. Whether it's done according to his way or your way. If it's done, done your way, it's in the flesh. It will burn. If it's done his way, you'll receive a reward or a promise. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 5. Willing to cooperate and do whatever. There is no limitations. None. No limitations. God can do anything at any time, anywhere, because you are allowing him to. 1 Peter chapter 5. But if you're not willing to cooperate, then you pay the price. Loss. Verse 5. 1 Pete chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people. We're all young, so praise God. Submit yourselves to... To your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. In other words, respect one another. And be clothed with what? Humility. Eat some humble pie. God resists the what? Oh, the proud fleshers. But God gives grace, his plan to the what? Humble. Those that are willing to deny themselves. Therefore, do what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time or release a promise to you. Predestined promise. Casting your cares upon him, for he what? Cares for you. Be sober. What's sober again? Alert. Be diligent. Consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about whom, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can steal, kill, and destroy, and mislead, so that you will not complete the assignment to receive the promise. We have predestined promises. God has promised for all of his children. And in fulfilling these assignments and receiving these promises and these blessings in the plan of God, you are changing more and more into his image and likeness. But if you're not willing to cooperate, you're changing more into your old man again. You're exchanging a new man for the old man. Remember, Jesus looks for Jesus. Jesus looks for Jesus. He has no association with the flesh, only with the Spirit, because God is Spirit. 
Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed, and I pray for each and every one here tonight, Lord, that the reality, the reality of the cooperation, completing assignments, and the release of promises, because you're a good daddy, and you want to bless our socks off all the time and surprise us. But Lord, we just ask that you'll kick us in the butt, slap us in the back of the head, and cause us to be alert, to be consistent, and to be pleasing to you so we can fulfill the assignment and receive the blessing that you have for each and every one. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.